Approximately 100 million years ago, North Africa was the world's hotspot for the largest carnivorous dinosaurs, with Spinosaurus reigning as the largest known meat-eating dinosaur to date. This Spinosaur theropod has held our intrigue since its discovery in the early 1900s, not only for its sheer size and strange form that only gets stranger with more discoveries, but also for its ill-fated contact with enemy bombers during World War II. But before we get into that, be sure to drop me a like, comment your favorite thing about the Spinosaurus, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, and this is Science Get. During 1910 to 1914, Bavarian paleontologists Ernst Freyer Stromer von Reichenbach and fossil hunter Richard Markgraf organized expeditions to Egypt where they found the remains of dozens of marine reptiles, crocodiles, turtles, and dinosaurs. In 1912, they uncovered the partial skeleton of a massive unknown dinosaur Stromer with later named Spinosaurus aegypticus, or Egyptian spine lizard after the row of spines atop its vertebrae, which grew over five feet long at their peak and is often referred to as the creature's sail. The discovery brought Stromer renown, and the fossils went on display in Munich. He published papers detailing his findings, including an article in Abhan Lugan of the Bavarian Academy of Sciences in 1915. However, his newfound fame dwindled in the following years with the rise of Hitler, as Stromer was an outspoken critic of the Nazi regime. Because Stromer was a German aristocrat, the Nazis avoided publicly attacking him or arresting him, and instead attempted to destroy his life through other means. He was forced into early retirement, and his three sons were conscripted and sent to the front lines in Russia. Two of his sons were killed, and the third went missing in action and would not return home until years after the war had officially ended. While the war raged on, Stromer feared Allied bombing would put his fossils in Munich in danger, and pleaded with museum director Karl Berlin to move the display to safety. Berlin, an ardent Nazi follower, believed Stromer's fears came from a defeatist attitude and refused his request. On the night of April 24, 1944, the British Royal Air Force took part in the bombing of Munich, which would leave half the city damaged, 4,185 wounded and 139 killed. The museum took a direct hit, and the entire Bavian collection was destroyed. For decades, Sturmer's findings are the most complete collection of a Spinosaurus fossil, and all that remained were his notes, drawings, and photos of the collection. Spinosaurus became shrouded in mystery, and new discoveries only raised more questions. The fossils Stromer's team discovered had no limb bones, and only a partial jaw. So his initial conceptualization was a bipedal monstrosity similar to a T-Rex. The discovery of relatives of Spinosaurus in the late 80s led scientists to challenge that image. Some instead theorized that it was more likely to have walked on all four limbs and to have had an elongated crocodile-like snout, a theory supported by fragments of jaw fossils found in the 90s. It was long held that this carnivore was restricted to terrestrial environments, or that they ate fish by wading into the shallows of rivers, similar to grizzly bears. However, recent findings point toward a more aquatic life than previously believed. It can take years, sometimes decades, for paleontologists to receive the funding necessary for expeditions, and often interest in a specific dig site will come from artisanal miners promising fines. In many developing countries rich in resources, millions of people find a livelihood in artisanal mining. They are largely unregulated and can consist of individuals, partnerships, members of legal associations and enterprises, and even family units. In southeastern Morocco, thousands of these miners comb through the region in search of fossils. Some such diggers hone their search to a sandstone formation known as the Kemkem beds with the specific intention of finding dinosaurs. The configuration is between 95 and 100 million years old, and holds traces of what was once an expansive river system large enough to host fish the size of cars. Yeah, cars. Paleontologist Nazir Ibrahim, who is of German and Moroccan descent, keeps in contact with diggers near the Kemkem beds. One of these connections led Ibrahim and his team to discover the most complete Spinosaurus fossil to be found to date and the most complete Cretaceous theropod fossil discovered in North Africa. 
The team published their initial findings in Science in 2014, and proclaimed the Moroccan fossils a replacement for the original Egyptian Spinosaurus fossils lost in the Munich bombings. Their reconstruction revealed the creature to be 50 feet long, making it longer than a T-Rex. The study further argued that it had stubby hind limbs, a slender torso, a skull shaped like a crocodile's, and thick walled bones like those of penguins and manatees. The study concluded this all pointed to a semi-aquatic lifestyle. Now this publication divided experts. Some scientists found the evidence compelling, while others claimed Spinosaurus's large sail would have created too much drag for serious swimming, and its curved neck and nostril placement would have been better suited to stab down into the water for prey, similar to a heron. There are even those who express doubt that the fossil was Spinosaurus, and might instead be a close Spinosaurus relative. Ibrahim's team was eager to return to the ChemChem beds to search for more evidence to back their theories further, and were able to do so with the support of National Geographic Society in September of 2018. What they uncovered would make an even bigger splash in the dino community. <laughs> get it? The dig was ruthless from the beginning, with the region's only jackhammer breaking within minutes of use. The team endured blistering heat that reached 120 degrees Fahrenheit, or 48 degrees Celsius. Encounters with snakes, sandstorms, flooding, and several hospitalizations once they returned home plagued the dig. But their hardships were rewarded with 30 tail vertebrae by the end of the dig season alone. Some of the vertebrae matched with Stromer's 1934 illustrations of fragments of Egypticus spinosaurus vertebrae, giving more credence to the claim that a spinosaur species living in Cretaceous North Africa ranged from Morocco to Egypt. Before this discovery, the tale of spinosaurus was unknown. Reconstructions were based on relatives, resulting in the depiction of a fairly typical theropod tail used for balance. But the tail Ibrahim's team assembled looked more like a large paddle that could have been used to propel through water similar to crocodiles. The tail has flexible bones capable of lateral movement that differs from other theropods' stiff bone tails. In order to understand how effective this tail would have been for aquatic life, Ibrahim's team conducted a series of experiments. In February of 2019, Stephanie Pierce, a curator of vertebrate paleontology at Harvard's Museum of Comparative Zoology, and her colleague George Lauder, a fish biologist, joined the team after being contacted by Ibrahim. Together, they used biorobotics to show that the tail could use forward thrusts like modern-day tetrapods such as salamanders and crocodiles. The device they used is a robot known as the flapper. It hangs below a water flume with precisely controlled flow and records the aquatic movements of a swimming animal, or robot, and the forces they transmit as they move. As is often the case with Spinosaurus, there has been debate about how useful the tail would have been for aquatic purposes. Some specialists speculate that the tail may have in fact been used for mating purposes rather than serve a function in water. Paleontologist Mark Witten made comparisons between the Spinosaurus tail and that of a crocodile's, this time focusing on the differences. He noted that as the vertebrae become more and more fragile as the tail advances, the spines start to overhang, which he suggested would have limited mobility. It is necessary for a crocodile's tail to have no overhanging bones in the way, as shown in the way the crocodile's spines all point up in the same angle, and are closely packed together. Whitman's statements have been countered, however, as his stance does not account for the musculature that would have existed when Spinosaurus lived. Experts like Louder believe the shape and flexibility of the tail actually have similarities to fish like marlin, which have overlapping spines and still use their tail as the main form of propulsion, with fins used like rudders. As more is uncovered about this bizarre and, until recent years, nearly forgotten creature, much about this dinosaur is still being pieced back together. From the generic, massive bipedal theropod of Stromer's imaginings, to the stork-like giant with an elongated tail and cone-shaped teeth, to Ibrahim's swimming terror, we continue to take Spinosaurus' anatomy where we have yet to see any other non-avian dinosaur. New discoveries may shed more light, or may yet just raise more questions about how these animals once hunted and lived. If you dug this content, be sure to hit that like button, share this video as it helps quite a bit in spreading the word on the channel, and be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of the show, and check out the Patreon while you're at it. Couldn't hurt, right? Speaking of which, look at all those names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachi, and I'll see you next time.